The third and final fossil fuel type that we'll be going through in this section is natural gas. Natural gas is a mixture of hydrocarbon gases that can be burned as fuel. The main constituent of the mixture is methane, which usually represents 85 to 90 percent of the blend. And as we learned in a previous section, natural gas is found in gas caps, which are pockets located above oil deposits. And natural gas used to be just vented or flamed when drilling for oil, meaning it was just released into the atmosphere or burned to get rid of it in the process of getting to the oil. But now it can be collected and purified for energy applications. And during the purification, the non-methane components of the mixture, which can include gases like propane, uh, butane, other hydrocarbons, as well as other non-hydrocarbon contaminants are separated out from the methane such that the gas that ends up getting distributed for use is just pure methane. There are a couple of approaches for extracting natural gas out of the earth. The conventional extraction method, which is shown in this diagram, it's labeled as just standard drilling, involves drilling down through the gas cap into reservoirs that are made of sandstone or limestone. And if you've ever handled sandstone or limestone before, you probably notice that it has a high permeability. Um, the material is put together very loosely. It crumbles relatively easily. And that means that the natural gas that is trapped within the pores and pockets can flow freely through the material and be pumped out. But this is not the case for all types of rocks that form natural gas reservoirs though. Hydraulic fracturing, also known as fracking, is an approach that's used to drill into rock layers that have an extremely low permeability, but nonetheless are storing pockets of natural gas. And an example of such a rock type is shale. Because of the low permeability of rocks like shale, the gas pockets can't flow freely through the material and be pumped out. So as a solution, what fracking does is it blasts slick water, which is a mixture of water, sand, and chemical additives into the rock at an extremely high pressure. And the effect of blasting this water is that fractures are created in the rock, which creates connections between gas pockets and improves the permeability so that the gas can be pumped out. And like with coal and oil, there are multiple environmental impacts brought on by the drilling and combustion of natural gas. And a big one is contamination. So the slick water used in fracking can contaminate groundwater sources with the chemical additives that are included in it. And also um, the fracking fluid flowback, which is the term that's used to describe the slick water that's withdrawn back out of the well, contains a number of contaminants from underground, including heavy metals, radioactive material, volatile organic compounds, and toxic airborne pollutants. Fracking also brings about increases in seismic activity, also known as induced earthquakes, um, tremors and earthquakes that are not naturally occurring, but rather caused by human activity. In 2016, the U.S. Geological Survey released a report concluding that up to 7.9 million people in parts of Kansas, Colorado, New Mexico, Texas, Oklahoma, and Arkansas were facing the same level of risk of earthquakes as people in the state of California which is significant because, as you may know, um, California lies on the San Andreas fault line, so they have a high risk of earthquakes. And this new risk for people in those states is a direct result of fracking activity. And then, um, like the other fossil fuel types, combustion of natural gas releases carbon dioxide emissions, which of course enhances the greenhouse effect. And although natural gas is considered a fossil fuel because it originates in the same way as other fossil fuels, not all natural gas is ancient in origin. Biogas reactors are machines that transform organic matter, including dead plant matter, animal waste, and even human sewage waste into natural gas. So biogas reactors are anaerobic chambers, meaning chambers that are lacking in oxygen. And by placing a slurry of organic waste into the chamber, and maintaining certain temperature conditions, the slurry is made to break down through anaerobic decomposition by microorganisms, which is parallel to what happens when fossil fuel gas, um, natural gas is created under natural conditions. Um, the natural gas 
that uh, it's, it's emitted by the microorganisms as they eat this waste material. And that product that they create is referred to as biogas. And so the biogas gets siphoned off and used in the same manner as conventional natural gas. And then the remaining slurry, which is now called digestate, can be piped out and used as fertilizer. So this is a more renewable, sustainable manner of producing natural gas. But of course, it doesn't mitigate the fact that burning natural gas still generates carbon dioxide emissions, but it does mitigate some of the other harmful consequences of drilling for natural gas. So this brings us to the end of our discussion about natural gas. Um, we've now looked in detail at the three types of fossil fuels. And together, the combustion of these fossil fuels for primary and secondary energy generates 80% of the human-caused emissions in the U.S. There are other non-energy-related sources of CO2 emissions. Um, for example, livestock give off CO2. But these are relatively small compared to the CO2 emissions that are tied to our energy production. It's also important to note that the three different fossil fuels are not equal in terms of their CO2 emissions per unit of energy that they generate. Um, so this table here shows you the three fossil fuel types, and then in the right-hand column, the number of pounds of CO2 that they release per unit energy. And in this case, the unit of energy represented is a BTU, which stands for a British thermal unit. A BTU is a measurement of heat energy. It's the amount of heat required to raise the temperature of one pound of water by one degree Fahrenheit. So the combustion of enough coal to generate a million BTUs produces 212 pounds of CO2. Combustion of enough oil, specifically gasoline, to produce the same amount of energy um, produces less CO2, only 156 pounds. And then natural gas is even lower at 117 pounds per BTU. And in recent decades, the U.S. has been transitioning its energy infrastructure away from reliance on coal and toward a greater reliance on natural gas, which is seen as a good thing because of the lower level of emissions that natural gas generates per unit energy. Um, you can see in this graph how much of our electricity in the U.S. has been produced from these different various sources. And as you can see, um, the dark gray line, which represents coal, was for a long time, the largest share of the electricity production in the U.S. But natural gas has been on the rise since the 90s and has gradually been replacing coal to the point where in 2015, natural gas overtook coal as the largest source of electricity in the generation, uh, electricity generation in the U.S. So this is seen as a good thing in terms of emissions, but there's also some concerns about the level of leakage of natural gas being unaccounted for when those emissions are calculated. Because given that natural gas is a gas, it's more difficult to contain than liquid oil or solid coal. It's known that there is some level of methane leakage at every step of the process for natural gas, from its drilling, to its storage, to its processing, transportation, and distribution. Some methane escapes and leaks out into the atmosphere at each of these steps. And methane, as we said before, is a powerful greenhouse gas. So some analyses have shown that this high amount of leakage may actually cancel out the CO2 emissions benefits that natural gas carries. So there may be just no winning with fossil fuels. In the following section, we will look at a different type of non-renewable energy, one that does not fall into the fossil fuels category and is much cleaner in terms of emissions, but comes with its own set of risks, and that is nuclear energy.